welcome to the, a new interview on my channel, The Horror Show Host. I am he, and uh, I'm here today with Guy and Smith. Say hello, Guy. Hello. I've been tracking you down, trying to find uh, a way to contact you for this interview for a while, so I'm really happy to have you on my show. Well, I'm pleased to be on your show. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to say that uh, I have around 70 of your paperback books. Um, I know that you've written a whole bunch more, um, but in the in the books that I have read, um, I have reviewed for a show called The Guy in Smith Files, which is still going on strong. I'm planning on reviewing the Slime Beast books next. Uh, <clears throat> so that I um, just wanted to shout that out real quick. And we'll go into the questions. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your books. Um, well, I started writing at a very young age. Um, my mother was a published historical author prior to 1939. And um, <clears throat> She encouraged me to write, but my father did his best to discourage me because my father was a bank manager, as was my uncle, and I was destined for banking from the day I was born. So uh, my mother then took on um, editing a lady's page in a local newspaper and encouraged me to write stories for it. Altogether, in those early years, I wrote 56 stories, westerns, space, um, crime and mystery, you name it. And um, I've got them all in a scrapbook, and um, that was where I started. When I was like in high school, I wrote about uh, stuff like that in my local newspaper, but uh, uh, that's a good place to start, especially when you're trying to be an aspiring author. Um, so how would you describe your books, like your stories? Like, I know they're pulp horror novels mo pretty much. And, uh, what would, what would you say defines them? You know, like how do they, uh, how do they stand out above like other books? Do you think? Well, when New English Library were looking for a werewolf book, um, I had a contact there and I sent a synopsis in and they accepted it right away. And um, I went from there. But then, of course, <clears throat> things got really big um, with Night of the Crabs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll never forget, um, we were on holiday at the seaside at Barmouth, and we had a walk down the town one sunny evening when shops were open, and my eldest son, about 12, he came racing out of the this shop. Dad, Dad, they've got hundreds of your books in here. <laughs> so I went in, and true, true enough, and um, the manager came across to me, and he said, oh, you're Guy Smith, are you? Do you think you could do a signing session? So they brought a table by the door, <clears throat> and I sat there signing book after book. And it all went from there. If only we had stores like that now, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, things are going really, really well now this end. Better than they've gone for years. I'm glad, for you. I'm glad to hear. I'm working in c conjunction with, but not part of, um, this um, sinister horror company in Bristol, right? Um... They are publishing the books, selling the books, and uh, Black Hill Books are also selling the books. And um, it's working really, really well. And we're aiming to offer a book every two months. Well, that's awesome. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, because uh, I, I was like, oh, I'm running out of books to collect. <laughs> and then, uh... <laughs> You'll have a few now. Because yeah. there's a few in the pipeline ready to go. Do you prefer to write shorter or longer stories? Because I know when you first started with, like, Werewolf by Moonlight and the Slime Beast and the Sucking Pit, um, there were shorter stories, but then you can see progressively that they wanted you to write longer books. But which one did you prefer to write, like, shorter well, or longer? I, mean, I don't mind, but what I have found um, over the years is that my... <clears throat> 
fans, my own fans, like a shorter book with action all the way. No padding, right? Uh So I've given them that in many instances. And um, I'll tell you how I arrive at my um, uh, book plots. My house is virtually a museum. You would be amazed at the stuff that's in it that I've collected. Now, a lot of those um, give me um, an idea for a story. And um, many of those are collected from the 50s and 60s. Now, a lot of my fans today um, are are the original ones that read my books in those years. That's really cool. So you're like your house is like a museum of ideas and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> have you um, um, have you seen my bibliography? Um, it's um, it's uh, family Bible size, right? Um, <laughs> all the books and magazine articles. I think there's 900 photographs in it, and oh, what, of, of your house and stuff. Pardon? Of your house? Or... No, uh, of covers and everything. Oh, that's cool. Because I wrote... I've written about 120 books and 4,000 magazine articles and short stories. Oh, I'll have to see if I have um, the money in today, because I I think I get paid tomorrow, so I'll definitely pick it up when I get the chance. Um, Um, Shane Agnew... um, compiled it, right? Yep. He's now working on a second edition because <clears throat> there's a lot more out there that I've never seen. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, if I had all the money that I should have been paid for books that have appeared in other countries, um, I should be extremely wealthy. I believe it. I definitely do. But <laughs> if you um, would like to... Um, email Shane Agnew, right? Um, I will speak to him and see that you get a copy. How's that? Oh, I appreciate that very much. I actually have him on Facebook, so I could just message him. Right. I I will put the word in as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Right. Oh, so when you write your earlier books, of course, you wrote, like, Night of the Crabs, uh, and uh, did you try to follow any trends like uh, Jaws when it came out a year before? Was that were they like pushing for a creature feature, kind of like Jaws in the vein of that? And that's why they wanted you to write something like Night of the Crabs, or did you just it was it something that you felt? No, like Night of the Crabs was something I thought up, right? Yep. And when I uh, when I submitted the synopsis to New English Library, they accepted it. I had no idea that it was going to be a lead title, right, or that it was going to do what it did and still does, because there are about eight sequels now. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I have every single one, <laughs> <laughs> except for The Crab's Fury. I don't have that one. That's the holy grail of crab books. What would have been a funny title to have for uh, Night of the Crabs to coincide with Jaws would have been Claws but that's just what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I read that there was a uh, Crabs movie in the works. Uh, if that's true, can you elaborate on that a little bit? No, uh, with the Crabs um, movie, uh, now let me see. Um, I sold it to uh, Milton Sabotsky, right, in mm-hmm. the very early days. Mm-hmm. Milton died, right? And everything, I'd had the money in advance, and Milton died, but a, uh, a load of crooks in uh, Columbia, I think it is, um, pinched the idea and made the movie. And I had a letter from a fan over there who thought it was <coughs> um, a cover for drugs. They were drug dealers. Oh, oh my goodness. So I never had anything off that. And I have got a copy of the, of the movie, which is absolute rubbish and nothing like what I wrote. Yeah, I, I actually have that movie because I remember hearing your interview on Spooky Isles 
Um, and you said it was an island clause, and I was like, wait a minute, I have that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, as you know, I've uh, I've had another Cramps book published this year. Yep. The Charnel Caves, right? Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> of course, then we move on to Sabat. We've had Sabat Five and Sabat Six. Mm-hmm. Sabat Six was launched at the convention my fan club convention a week last Sunday. Um, It was the best ever convention. Um, We have one every September, and we had fans here from Poland, USA, all over the UK. And um, we had a terrific day. It was the best ever fan club convention. Yeah, I definitely want to try to make it to one of those, possibly next September, depending on... Uh, money situation and stuff, but I'd probably try to make it, but hopefully, you know, if it all works out. Yeah. It's, we're, I'm like on the East Coast, so it's not like a, it's a, it's a, it's a hall, but it's not like a all over the world kind of thing, you know, it's not terribly far. Um, but, um, anyway, I mean, things are going as never before at the moment. Yeah, so it's it's all going in your favor now instead of, like, oh, back pockets and people are trying to leech off of your success. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got a, a, a movie being made in New Zealand, Killer Crabs. Your movie, there's a new one they're working on? They're working on it and they're filming it at the moment, right? And oh. um, the Canadian slime beast is looming. Right. Yep. And um, I had an email a week or two ago from a firm in the States that organises TV and movies for companies, and they asked about the possibility of doing a crab series for American television. Oh, that'd be cool. So I (laughs) replied and said, uh, that's fine by me, so I'm waiting to hear. That'd be really cool. Right. Um, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. But otherwise, uh, I mean, everything is going fast, and um, we are so, so busy. Right. I have um, an assistant, uh, Nick, right, who comes uh-huh. in. Now, I have a policy of which I... Do not use a computer or word processor. All my books are written by hand, as they have been from the outset. Because if I had to deal with a computer, (laughs) I'd never get any books written. So I write all my books by hand, right? Yep. And I keep these scripts, which go in the fan club auctions. And my word, they don't half bid for them. I mean, imagine a handwritten sabbat, handwritten this, that, or the other. Because uh-huh. there'd only ever be one in existence, won't there? <laughs> yeah. So you have uh, you write them all by hand, and then your uh, your second uh, was it secretary uh, types them out for you. That's right. Then I proof them and oh. um, do it away. That's cool. That's really cool. We don't, not a lot of authors write their own stories by hand anymore. No, no, no. Uh, a big friend of mine, he'll laugh at this, said recently, Guy, you want to move on. You're living in the past. Yeah, <laughs> it's serving me very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't change what isn't doesn't need to be fixed, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, uh, so I know that Night of the Crabs, the... Um, the original book was re-released from, I believe, Black Hill Press, um, and it was, like, in a whole new edition. Are you planning on doing that for the rest of the sequels, like Killer Crabs, Origin of the Crabs? Well, I mean, there have been such interest in the crabs that um, I've got to keep it going. Uh, That's why I wrote another one this year. (laughs) It's a little difficult with creatures that are Virtually, um, well, they're uh, marine creatures, 
And I mean, if they were some sort of man-eating monster that could travel over land, um, the books would be much easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually, there's only like there's only too, so much you can do with crabs, but um, but I what I, I've actually read all the crab books and I loved every single one of them. So um, there's a lot you can do with crabs, and at the same time, there's very little you can do with crabs. But I think you made it work very well. Right. Have you got the charnel caves? I do. You do. Yeah. Yep. I also have Sabbat Six. Oh, you've got Sabbat Six. Yep. Yeah, he's very, very popular. He's a big seller. Oh, I believe it. I mean, six books about a character that wasn't popular, I'd be wondering why, but... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But, um, (laughs) I mean, um, as I told you, um, my mother encouraged me to write, write. (laughs) My father did his best to discourage me because I I was going to be a banker, right? And um, when we sold the film rights of Night of the Crabs, I'd been a, I was a bank manager in Birmingham then, so I, um, I gave my notice in um, and, and bought this place up here in the hills, which I knew from many years before. But um, I, the bank had me up at head office in London and tried to talk me out of resigning. Would they do that today? They're glad to get rid of everybody they can. Yep. But um, anyway, I mean, it all worked out that um, what used to happen was when I resigned, right, my mother didn't want my father to know, right, so it was all kept secret from him. And um, whenever he used to visit our family home, I used to be tucked away upstairs, keeping quiet until he had gone. It was kind of a uh, what he wanted, not what you wanted kind of situation. Well, yeah, that's been it from the start, because banking for him was the only career. But I think I was very fortunate in being able to make a success of writing and get out of a job which I never wanted to go into in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, might as well do what you love doing, right? Yeah. So is there any uh, new uh, new announcements for upcoming books, or did you want to keep that secret for the fans? Well, we'd better keep it secret um, oh. for the fans. Um, there is uh, one, two, two more already written. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't mind keeping it a secret. That's totally fine. But what we're doing is... Um, <laughs> At one stage, um, I was doing very well with um, a publisher in the States, in New York, right? Zebra Books, right? Yep. And then everybody decided that the day of the category book had come to an end, so they weren't publishing any more um, run-of-the-mill novels. So um, what I did was um, we had... Uh, Black Hill Books has been a second-hand bookshop for 30 years, right? I amalgamated uh, Black Hill Books into a publishing company, and I'd already got the fan base. I couldn't have done it without having an existing fan base, and we published books ourselves from here very successfully. That's that's inspiring, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is that about it? Yep, that, that should cover it. <laughs> well, I hope it's uh, to your satisfaction. Oh, I, I, re- I greatly appreciate you taking your time out of your very busy schedule to do this interview. Well, I'm, I'm only too pleased to. And um, I hope we can keep in contact in the future. Oh, definitely. And, um, well... Uh, It's nice to be doing an interview with you. Okay, then. Okay, so thank you all for watching. Um, I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment, and share on this video. And let me know what your favorite Guy and Smith book is. And make sure to hit the notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. No, sorry, like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon. The links to those two sites are in the description below. And to leave comments and subscribe. We'll... uh 
keep in touch.